And now, in this lecture, we'll find out the radius of the big circle. In the drawing, we have a big triangle. Inside the big triangle, we have two circles in one square. The radius of the small circle is equal to one unit. The side length of the square is equal to two units. And our mission is to find out the radius of this big circle. So, first of all, we will define the vertex of the triangle is point A. We will define this vertex as B. We will define this vertex as C. We will define the center of the small circle is O. We define the center of the big circle as P. We define a point of tendency of tangent BC with this big circle as Q. We define the touching point of the square with the with side BC. We define the a point of tendency of side BC with the small circle as D. We define the, uh, the touching point of the this uh, touching point as point E. We define the touching point as point F. We define the point of tendency of the square of the circle as point H. We define the touching point of the square of side AC of the triangle as point L. We define the point of tendency of the circle with side AC as M. And we define the point of tendency of tangent AC with the big circle as K. Okay. We define the point of tendency of the small circle with side LE of the square as N. We will join points O and N together by a straight line. Point O is the center of the circle, point N is the point of the circle itself, therefore ON is the radius of the circle that is equal to 1. Here the radius ON is drawn to the point of tendency, therefore according to rule number 1 that says that tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency, then this angle is equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Likewise, we have point O is the radius of, uh, is the center of the circle, point D is the point of the circle in center, for O D is the radius of the circle that is equal to 1, and we have the radius all of this that is one to the point of tendency, therefore according to rule number one, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. All the angles inside the square are right angles. So those angles are equal to 90 degrees. Each side of the square is equal to 3 units, so I write it down. This side equals to 3 units, this side equals to 3 units. And here we have also rule number 3 that states that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line 
is equal to 180 degrees. So if we focus, we know that BC is one side of triangle ABC, therefore it is absolutely a straight line. So if we focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point F, then here the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in the upper side of BC at point F, here this angle that is equal to 90 degrees, plus this angle, in total that must be equal to 180 degrees. So this angle must be also equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles on the upper side of BC at point F to 180 degrees, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees. Likewise, if we focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point E, here the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So this angle equals to 90 degrees, therefore this angle must be equal to 90 degrees for the same reason. Okay. So actually we found out that inside quadrilateral O and E D inside the green small quadrilateral O and D E we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to ninety degrees. So, therefore, inside from the other O and E D, we have four right angles. Therefore, quadrilateral O and D E is a square, uh, is a rectangle. So, quadrilateral O and D E is a rectangle, and we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, O N equals to E D. O n equals to E d, but O n is the radius of the circle that is equal to 1, therefore E d will be also equal to 1 unit. E d equals to 1 unit. According to the same rule that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, we get that side O d equals to side N e, but O d equals to 1, therefore N e will be also equal to 1. And we know that LE is one side of square edge LEF, and we know that all the sides of square edge LEF are equal to three units. So if LE equals to three units, N equals to one unit, then LN will be equals to LE minus L e. Again, Ln equals to L e minus L e. So L e is 3 and N e is 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So in conclusion, we found out that Ln equals to 2 units. Okay. So here we have also rule number 2 according to rule number 2. The lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. We have the common external point point P. From the common external point point P, we have two tangents to the circle, tangent PA and tangent PB. And according to number two, they are equal to each other. That is to say, PA is equal to PB. We can implement all number two in our drawing because in our drawing, if we focus on the common external point point L, we have from point L two tangents to the small circle, tangent LN and tangent LM. And according to all number two, they are equal to each other. That is to say LN equals to LM. LN equals to LM, but we know that LN equals to two, therefore LM will be also equal to two. LM equals to two units. Likewise, if you focus on the current standpoint point, point C, from the current standpoint point, point C, we have two tangents to this circle, tangent CD and tangent CM. And according to one number two, they are equal to each other. That is to say, CM equals to CD. So if we define CM as X, then CD will be also equal to X, because they are equal to each other. 
Okay. So, in the next step, we will focus on the green white triangle, triangle LEC. And we implement the Pythagoras theorem on the green white triangle, triangle LEC. And the green white triangle, triangle LEC, according to the Pythagoras theorem, The PT is a relation for Pythagoras theorem. So according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the apertures equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is LC, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is LC square. And it must be equal to the sum of the source of the perpendiculars, that is, to, uh, that is to say it must be equal to Le square plus Ec square. I repeat again. In the right green triangle, triangle LEC, according to the Pythagoras theorem, LC square equals to LE square plus EC square. Okay, so here the bottom LC, the bottom LC is equal to 2 plus x, therefore LC square equals to 2 plus x square. And it is equal to Le square. Le equals to 2 plus 1, that is 3. Therefore, Le square is 3 squared, that is 9. Plus Ec square. Ec, for the moment, it is very easy to see that Ec is equal to 1 plus x. Therefore, Ec square will be equal to 1 plus x square. So, in conclusion, for the moment, according to equation number 1, 2 plus x squared equals to 9 plus, uh, plus 1 plus x squared. So here we'll open the brackets on both sides, both sides of this equation, equation number 1, and we'll get that 2 plus x squared equals to 2 squared, that is 4, plus x squared, plus 2 times 2 times x, that is 4x. And it is equal to 9 plus 1 plus x squared. 1 plus x squared equals to 1 squared, that is 1, plus x squared plus 2x. So here we have x squared on both sides of equation over 1, so x squared will, be, will get cancelled. So here we have 4 plus 4x, that is equal to 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 2x. Here we we'll subtract from 4 for this equation, equation number 1, and we get that equivalent to equation number 1, 4x equals to 10 minus 4 is 6 plus 2x. So here we we'll subtract 2x for this equation, equation number 1, and we we'll get the devolving to equation number 1. 4x minus 2x is 2x, and is equal to 6. So here we we'll divide this equation, equation number 1 by 2, and we we'll get that. According to equation number one, I found out that x equals to three units. So here we can write down the drawing that x equals to four units.
Okay, so in the next step, we join points O and then together by straight line. Point O is the center of the circle. Point M is the point of the circle itself. Therefore, O M is the radius of the circle. It is equal to one. In the next step, we join point C and O together by a straight line. So here, by joining points C and O by a straight line, we created here two right triangles. And we report that the two right triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. Okay? We report that those two right triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. I'm sure we report that the right green triangle, triangle M O C. Can go to the right the green triangle, triangle D O C. So why those two triangles can go to each other? First of all, M D equals to O D. The above the radii of the circle that is equal to one unit. In addition, CM equals to CD, CM equals to CD. They are both equal to two units according to rule number two. And finally, CO is the common side that belongs to both triangles, so CO equals to itself. CO equals to CO is the common side that belongs to both triangles. So I'm going to report that the two green triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. I'm writing down. Report the triangle MOC can go into triangle DOC. According to side, side, side rule. And from the fact that the two green triangles can go into each other, we will derive that those two angles are equal to each other. According to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two triangles can go into each other, therefore the two corresponding angles must be also equal to each other. So if we define one angle as theta, then the other angle must be also equal to theta because of the, of the fact that they are equal to each other. Okay? In the next step, we will join points M and D together by a straight line. This way, we created here triangle DMC. Actually, we found out that line segment CO, this line segment, is 
the angle with sexto of angle C. It divides CO divides angle C into two halves, each half equals to theta. In triangle DMC. I'll repeat again. I found out that CO is the angle receptor of angle C in triangle DMC. Okay. Here we will join points P and K together by a straight line. Point P is the center of the circle. Point K is the point of the circle itself. The whole PK is the radius of the circle. It is equal to R. We will join point C and fit together by a straight line. And we'll prove here this angle. We have the radius PK that is drawn to the weight of tendency. Therefore, according to rule number one, this angle equals to 90 degrees. And this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Exactly for the same reason, we have the radius PK that is drawn to the point of tendency. Therefore, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So, in the next step, we will prove that the right big triangle triangle PQC is converted to the right big triangle triangle PKC. Okay, so. Yeah. Triangle PKC, the big right triangle, is converted to the right big triangle, triangle PQC, this right, right big triangle. So why those two right triangles can run to each other? First of all, PK equals to PQ, they are both the radii of the circle. Therefore, they are equal to each other. In addition, if we focus on point C, from the coming from point, point C, we have two tangents to this big circle. We have tangent PK and we have tangent Tangent CK and tangent CQ. And CK equals to CQ according to rule number two. And finally, PC is the common side that belongs to all triangles, so PC equals to itself. PC equals to PC is the common side that belongs to all triangles. So we actually proved that those two right big triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. And from the fact, uh, so I write it down, triangle PKC can go into triangle PQC according to side, side, side rule.
And from the fact that those two right angles can go into each other, we will conclude, we will realize that those two angles are equal to each other. According to the rules that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two triangles can go into each other. Therefore, those two corresponding angles must be also equal to each other. So if you define one angle as theta, then the other angle will be also equal to theta, because they are equal to each other. So actually, here we will join points K and Q by straight line. In this way, we created triangle QKC. We actually found out that PC PC is the angle of a sector is the angle of a sector of angle C. PC is the angle Receptor of angle C, it's angle, angle C in triangle KQC. Okay, again. PC is angle bisector of angle C, triangle KQC. And we have already found out that OC, OCO, is also the angle bisector of angle C. In triangle OMC. So we have two angle receptors, two angle C, PC and OC or CO. So in the next step, we will prove that the angle receptor CO passes for point P. The angle receptor CO passes for point P, that is to say point C, O and P, they are all located on the same straight line. So, we will prove our claim is that The angle bisector OC passes for point P. Repeat again on the claim. Our claim is that angle receptor OC passes for point P. So we'll prove the claim in a negative way. Okay, so in a negative way. Assume that CO doesn't pass for point P. CO doesn't pass for point P. Okay, CO doesn't pass for point P, 
3, and from this assumption we arrive to a contradiction, and due to the contradiction we will conclude that our assumption is not correct, that is to say CO must pass for point P. Okay. So if CO doesn't pass for point P, then we will have here angle DCO, we have one angle that is angle DCO. So we have one angle that is angle DCO. It is equal to theta. Here, as you can see from the drawing, it is very easy to see from the drawing that CD is part of BC. CD is part of BC. So here we can. So right here. That is to say, BC and DC are both located on the same straight line. Okay? BD and BC are both located on the same straight line. And angle DCO equals to theta. And the second angle that we have here, according to our assumption, we have angle BCP. Angle BCP. So I write it down, we have angle BCP. Angle BCP. This is angle. PCP. Okay. And as I as I already mentioned before, DC is on the same straight line as BC. Okay. So here. DC is located on the same straight line as BC. Okay, DC and BC they are, they are both located on the same straight line. So, we have one leg of the triangles that are both located on the same straight line. While if we focus on the second leg of the triangles, we have the second leg here is CO and the second leg here is CP. We have CO and CP. But here, according to our assumption, CO doesn't pass for point P. If CO doesn't pass for point P, it means that C 
CO is not located on the same straight line as CP. Okay, so we can write down that according to our assumption, that CO doesn't pass from point C, we will conclude that CO and CP are not located on the same straight line. So we have here two angles that one leg of the two angles is located on the same straight line while the other leg of the two angles is not located on the same straight line. Therefore they can never be equal to each other because in order that those two angles will be equal to each other if one leg is located, if one leg of the two angles is located on the same straight line, then the other leg of the two angles must be also located on the same straight line. Otherwise, they will not be equal to each other. Okay. So here, therefore. We will conclude that if angle OCD is equal to theta, then angle BCP is not equal to theta, but to other angle, that is angle alpha. So we actually found out that in conclusion, angle C as two angle bisectors that are CO and CP that bisect it into two different halves. While the angle bisector CO bisects angle C into two halves that each of them is theta, so it is theta and theta, Ang the angle bisect to CP bisects angle C into two different halves, halves that each half equals to alpha. And it is a contradiction, why? Because if, for example, angle C is equals to 30 degrees, then any angle bisector of angle C, any angle bisector of angle C will bisect angle C into two halves. That each half equals to 15 degrees and only 15 degrees and not any other halves. So due to the contradiction, We will conclude that 
that our assumption is incorrect and therefore the angle by sector C O passes for point P. Okay, we finished with the proof. So, in the next step, we will focus on the right given small triangle, triangle ODC, the right green triangle, triangle ODC. We have this angle is equal to theta. This angle equals to 90 degrees. So the third angle, this angle, must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Why? Because 90 degrees minus theta plus theta is 90 degrees. And 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. That is the sum of the angles in any triangle. Likewise, in the right big triangle, triangle, T, Q, C, this angle equals to theta. This angle equals to 90 degrees. Therefore, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. In the next step, we will prove that the big right triangle, triangle P, Q, C, this big triangle, is similar to the right small triangle, triangle ODC. So why those two triangles are similar to each other? First of all, we just right now found out that those two angles are both equal to 90 degrees one of theta, therefore they are equal to each other. So here angle, this angle is angle QPC. And it is equal to this angle, that is angle DOC. And keep again, angle QPC equals to angle DOC, they are both equal to 90 degrees when of theta, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, we have those two angles, they are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. So I write it down. This angle is angle PQC. And it is equal to this angle that is actually angle ODC. Okay, the again. Angle PQC equals to angle ODC. They are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. And finally, we have angle theta that is a common angle, so we can write down that angle theta equals to itself. So we can write down, we can call to angle theta two different names. Angle theta equals to angle PCQ, and it is equal to angle theta that we can call to angle theta also angle OCD. Again, angle theta equals to itself. It's a common angle that belongs to both triangles. So, actually, proved 
the triangle PQC can, is, is similar to triangle ODC according to angle, 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 similarity rule. So I write it down. Report the triangle PQC. is similar to triangle ODC according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. And for the fact that those two triangles are similar to each other, we will derive that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will derive that PQ in the right big triangle over OD in the small green right triangle is equal to QC in the big right triangle over DC in the small green right triangle. I repeat again. We will derive that PQ over OD equals to QC over DC. So here PQ is the radius of the big circle that is equal to R. OD is the radius of the small circle that is equal to 1. QC, what is the value of QC? The value of QC is equal to 3 plus 1 plus 3, that is 7, plus QF. So QC equals to 7 plus QF. Over DC. Here, DC equals to x that is equal to 3 units. So we substitute dc by 3. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, r equals to 7 plus qf over 3. We multiply this equation, equation number 1, by 3. And we get that according to equation number 1, three r is equal to 7 plus QF. Here we subtract 7 from this equation, equation number 1, and we get that according to equation number 1, QF is equal to 3R minus 7. 3R minus 7. So we found out that QF equals to 3R minus 7. If you write down in the drawing that QF equals to 3R minus 7. QF equals to 3R minus 7. Because of the fact that the side of the square, the side length of the square is equal to 3 units, we will examine three cases of the value of the radius of the big circle. Either the radius of this big circle can be less than three units, the radius of this circle could be equal exactly to three units, and the radius of this circle could be greater than three units. So we will examine each case to find out which is the right answer to our question. That is the value of this radius. Okay. In case number one, we assume that the radius of this big circle is less than three units. So R is less than 3 units. Okay. In case number 1, R is less than 3 units. 
for the draw a circle with a radius that is less than 3 units and we'll analyze the circle with the drawing in order to find out if this is the correct answer for our question. So we have here we know that this is the radius and the radius is less than 3 units in its length Therefore, the square that is equal to 3 units in its length will be longer than the radius. So here, It will be actually shorter than the radius, of course. R is less than 3 units, and the square is longer than the radius because the side length of the square is 3 units, and R is less than 3 units. So here we have a square with side length of 3 units Say here it was 90 degrees according to rule number one. Here the radius that is one to the point of tendency. So here inside for the other PHQF, this for the other one, we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay. For the other PHQF as four right angles, the fourth is a left angle. For the other PHQF is a left angle because it has four right angles. And we know that the opposite sides of a left angle are equal to each other. That is to say PH equals to QF. PH equals to QF but P is equals to R, therefore QF will be also equal to R. Okay. And here, likewise, PQ equals to HF. But PQ equals to R, therefore HF will be also equal to R. So actually, we have here a square. For one side, QF equals to R. From the other side, we have already found out that QF is also equal to 3R 
minus 7. Okay, so QF equals to from one side to R and from the other side to 3R minus 7. Therefore, we can derive from it that R equals to 3R minus 7. We subtract R from this equation and we get that 0 equals to 2R minus 7. Here we will add 7 to this equation and we get that 2R equals to 7. Here we divide this equation by 2 and we get that R equals to 7.5 units. So from one side, according to our assumption, R is less, is less than 3 units, but from the other side, when we analyze the drawing, we arrive to the conclusion that R equals to 3.5 units, so it is a contradiction. R cannot be equal to both uh, 3.5 units and to be less than 3 units. So due to the contradiction, we will cancel this option, that is to say, the radius of the big circle cannot be less than 3 units. So, the next step we examine the second case that R equals to 3 units exactly. So, in the second case, R is equal to 3 units. This is case 2. R equals to 3 units. So if R equals to 3 units, it means that you have a circle with a radius of 3 units. The big circle is a circle with a radius of 3 units. And the square is also equal to 3 units. Okay. R equals to 3 units. Here also R equals to 3 units. The sides of the square are also equal to 3 units. According to what is given as the question, According to rule number one, this angle is equal to 90 degrees. So actually, here inside quadrilateral PHQF, we have one, two, three rectangles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So inside quadrilateral PHQF we have four right angles, therefore quadrilateral PHQF is a left angle. Quadrilateral PHQF is a left angle because it has four right angles. And we know that the opposite sides of a left angle are equal to each other. That is to say, PH is equal to QF. PH is equal to QF. But here, PH equals to R. It is equal to 3 units. From this equation, 3 equals to pH equals to QF, we will derive that QF is also equals to 3. So, from one side, QF equals to 3, and from the other side, QF 
equals to 3 r minus f, therefore qf equals to qf, that is to say 3 equals to 3 r minus 7. From one side qf equals to 3 r minus 7, from the other side it is equal to r, therefore we can write down that 3 equals to 3 r minus 7. 3 equals to 3 r minus 7. Here we add 7 to this equation and we get that 3r equals to 3 plus 7, that is 10. We divide this equation by 3 and we get that r equals to 3 and the third. So r equals to 3 and the third from one side and from the other side according to our assumption r equals to 3. So it is a contradiction. R cannot both be equal to three and to three and four. Due to the contradiction, we cancel this possibility that R equals to three. Therefore, we left only if the second possibility that the radius of this uh, of the big circle is greater than three units. So if the radius of the big circle is greater then a few units, then we have a radius with the, a, a, red, uh, a circle with a radius that is greater than three units. So I draw the circle. So this is the radius that is greater than 3, therefore the square that is equal to 3 units will be shorter than the radius. So here we draw the square with 3 units, it is shorter than the radius. So, yeah, this is PQ, PQ, So this is the drawing, if r is greater than 3 units, here from the point of tendency of the square with the circle, that is point h, we draw perpendicular on the radius pq. We repeat again, from point h we draw perpendicular on pq, so here this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point H and PQ as T. So, inside quadrilateral TH QF, we have one, two, three right angles. Repeat again, inside for the other T, H, Q, F, we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So inside for the other T, H, Q, F, we have four right angles. Therefore, for the other THQF is a rectangle. Quadrilateral 
T H Q F is a rectangle because it has four right angles. And you know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, T H side T H of the rectangle must be equal to side T Q. T H equals to T Q. But it is actually TQ side TQ of the rectangle is equal to side edge F of the rectangle. According to the rule that the opposite sides of the rectangle are equal to each other. But edge F equals to three units. It is the one side of the square that is equal to three units. So from this equation, TQ equals to HF equals to 3, we will derive that TQ is also equals to 3 units. TQ equals to 3 units. Likewise, according to the same rule, TH must be equal to QF. TH equals to QF. But we have already found out that QF equals to 3 R minus 7. So can I know that QF equals to 3R minus 7, and from this equation TH equals to QF equals to 3R minus 7, we will derive that TH is also equals to 3R minus 7. TH is equal to 3R minus 7. TH equals to 3R minus 7. Okay. What is the value of PT? It is very easy to see from the drawing that PT is equal to PQ minus TQ. Again, and again, PT equals to PQ minus TQ. So PT is equal to PQ, PQ is the radius of the circle, so PQ equals to R, minus TQ that is equal to 3. So in conclusion, I found out that PT equals to R minus 3. So can I down here that PT equals to R minus 3. We we'll join points P and H together by a straight line. Point P is the center of the circle, point H is, is the point on the circle itself, therefore PH is the radius of the circle that is equal to R. So in the next step we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle PTH. I will copy the right triangle PTH in a new page and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on this right triangle. So here, here, the right triangle, triangle PTH. So this is the right triangle, triangle PTH that I call it from the original drawing. So here by PT is the version for Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the apertures equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. PTH. The hypotenuse is PT, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is PT square. 
is pH square, the apotons is pH, therefore the square of the apotons is pH square. And it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it must be equal to Pt square plus Th square. pH equals to R, therefore pH square will be equal to R square. That is equal to Pt square. Pt equals to R minus 3, therefore Pt square is R minus 3 square plus Th square. Th is 3R minus 7, therefore Th square is 3R minus 7 square. Here we'll open the brackets on this side of the equation number 1, so we'll get that R square equals to r minus 3 squared is r squared plus 3 squared that is 9 minus 2 times r times 3 is minus 6r plus 3 minus r squared equals to 3r squared that is 9r squared plus 7 squared that is 49 minus 2 times 3 is minus 6 and minus 6 times 7 is minus 42 so this uh, expression will be equal to minus 42r so here we have R square on both sides of the equation, so R square will get cancelled. What is left from equation number one after we cancel R square? In this side, nothing is left, we have zero. That is equal to 9 plus 48 is 58, plus 9R square, minus 6R. Minus 42R is minus 48R. So we have here a quadratic equation. The quadratic equation states that nine R square minus 48R plus 58 equals to 0. So this is a quadratic equation and the general formula for quadratic equation is AX squared plus BX plus C equals to 0. Here A, B and C are the coefficients of the quadratic equation and X is the variable that we are looking for. And we will find out the value of X according to the following formula that X equals to minus B plus minus square root of B square minus 4 times A times C over 2A. Okay. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a equals to 9. The coefficient b equals to 40, minus 48. And the coefficient c equals to 58. And the variable that we are looking for is r, so therefore x equals to r. So we put the data inside the formula for x and we find out the value of the values of r because x equals to r. So we get that r equals to minus b. b is minus 48, so minus minus 48 is plus 48 plus minus square root of b square is the square root of minus 48 square is 2,304 minus 4 times a is 9, so minus 4 times 9 is minus 36, minus 36 times c is 58. So, and minus 36 times 58 is minus 2,088 over 2a. a equals to 9, so 2a is 2 times 9, that is 18. So in conclusion, we found out that r equals to 48 plus minus 2,304 minus 2,088 is 216 over 18.
So R equals to 48 plus minus the square root of 216 is 14.6969 over 18. So here we have two solutions that are possible for R. The first solution for R is that R equals to 48 minus 14.6969 over 18. And 14, 48 minus 14.6969 is 33. 0.3 of 3, 1 over 18 is 1.85. So, I found out that the common for the first solution that R, the radius of the big circle R, is equal to 1.85 units, but we already found out that R cannot be less than 3 units and 1.85 is less than 3 units therefore we cancel this solution it is incorrect solution so we have the other solution that is left that are equals to 48 plus 14.6969 over 18 so here 48 Plus 14.6969 is 62.6969 over 18. 62, uh, 48, uh, so 62.6969 over 18 is. 3.483. So I found out that the radius of the big circle equals to 3.483 units. Okay, I finished with the points of the question. So in the next step, I will summarize the lecture. So in the drawing, we have. A big triangle inside the big triangle we have two circles and a square we know that the radius of the small circle is equal to one unit while uh, and we also know that the side length of the square is equal to three units and our mission is to find out the radius of the big circle we actually used three rules in order to answer to the question and according to the first rule uh, rule number one is actually a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius to one to its point of tendency. We have here tangent AB to this circle is at point M. Point M is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle. And here we have the radius OM that is drawn to the point of tendency. And whenever we have a radius that is drawn to the point of tendency, then tangent AB will be perpendicular to the radius MO. So if AB is perpendicular to MO, it means that this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle also equals 90 degrees. Then I present it to rule number 2. According to rule number 2, the lengths of two tangents from the common exam point to a circle are equal. So we have the common exam point, point P. From the common exam point, point P, we have two tangents to this circle. We have tangent PA and tangent PB, and according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. That is to say, PA is equal to PB. This is rule number two, and we have also rule number three, that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So we have here, CD is a straight line, and if we focus on the upper side of the straight line CD at point O, 
I told it to this one, number three, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in the upper side of CD at point O, we have angle alpha and angle beta, therefore alpha plus beta must be equal to 180 degrees. So those are the three rules that we used in this question. And here, uh, by using those three rules, we actually have here quadrilateral NOED that has four right angles, therefore it is a square. Again, I will not repeat on the three rules, we used the three rules in order to arrive to the conclusion that quadrilateral NOED in the test for right angles is a rectangle. And the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, NO is equal to ED. NO equals to ED, but NO equals to one unit, therefore ED will be also equal to one unit. Likewise, according to the rule that the opposite sides of everything are equal to each other, we get that OD equals to NE. OD equals to NE, but OD equals to one unit, therefore NE will be also equal to one unit. So we found out that for the other NOED is a square. Okay, then we used rule number two here from, from point L, the current sum point point L, we have two tangents to this circle, tangent LN and tangent LM, and according to rule number two, LN, LN equals to LM. But here, what is the value of LN? And L, LN equals to the side of the square that is 3 minus 1 that is 2. So if LN equals to 2, then LM must be also equal to 2 because they are equal to each other according to rule number 2. Likewise, we focus on the common example point, point C. From the common example point, point C, we have two tangents to this circle. Tangent, tangent CD and tangent CM, and according to rule number 2, they are equal to each other. That is to say, CD is equal to CM. So CD equals to CM, so if CD equals to X, then CM must be also equal to X because they are equal to each other. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle LEC. In the right green triangle, triangle LEC, according to the Pythagoras theorem, LC square equals to LE square plus E square, EC square. Again, LC square equals to LE square plus EC square. LC square equals to LE square plus EC square. LC equals to 2 plus X. Therefore, LC square equals to 2 plus X square. LE equals to 2 plus 1, that is 3. Therefore, LE square equals to uh, 3 square, that is 9. Plus E square. EC equals to 1 plus X. Therefore, EC square equals to 1 plus X square. So in conclusion, we got that 2 plus x squared equals to 9 plus 1 plus x squared. We open the brackets on the both sides of equation number 1, and we got that according to equation number 1, 2 plus x squared equals to 2 squared, that is 4, plus x squared plus 2 times 2x is 4x. And it is equal to 9 plus 1 plus x squared. 1 plus x squared equals to 1 squared, that is 1, plus x squared plus 2x. So here we have x squared on both sides of equation number one, therefore x squared will get cancelled. What is left after we cancel x squared in equation number one? What is left is, is that in this side of the equation we have left with 4 plus 4x, that is equal to 9 plus 1 is 10 plus 2x. Here we subtract the 4 from this equation, equation number one, and found out that here 4x is equal to 10 minus 6 is 4 plus 2x. So in proportion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 4x equals to 6 plus 2x. Here we subtracted 2x from this equation, equation number 1, and we found out that 4x plus 2x is 2x. So 2x equals to 6. Here we divided this equation, equation number 1, by 2, and we got that 
x equals to 6 over 2, that is 3. So x equals to 3 units. You can write here that x equals to 3 units, and here also x equals to 3 units. Okay? Then we join point C and O together by a straight line. Okay, and then the line segment CO. We join points O and M together by a straight line. Point M is the center of the circle, point M is the point of the circle, etc. For OM is the radius of the circle that is equal to 1. Then we actually prove that the two green small right triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side one. So I'll explain what I mean. Here, CM equals to CD equals to 3 units according to rule number 2. In addition, MO is equal to OD, they are both around the eye of the circle, that is equal to 1 unit. And finally, CO is a common side that belongs to both triangles, so CO equals to itself. So we actually proved that the two red triangles can point to each other according to side, side, side rule. And from the fact that the two white green triangles can point to each other, we will derive that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in can point triangles are equal to each other. Those two triangles can point to each other, therefore the two corresponding angles must be also equal to each other. So if one angle is equal to theta, then the other angle must be also equal to theta because of the fact that they are equal to each other. Then we joined points M and D together by a straight line, and this way we created triangle MDC. So actually you can conclude that here CO is the angle bisector of triangle M uh, of angle C. Repeat again. CO is the angle bisector of angle C in triangle MDC. Why? Because CO bisects angle C into two halves. Each half equals to theta. Okay, then we join points P and K together by a straight line. Point P is the center of the circle. Point K is the point of the circle itself. Therefore, PK is the radius of the circle that is equal to R. Then we join point C and P together by a straight line. In this way, we created those two right big triangles. And we prove that the two big right triangles can go into each other. Triangle PKC, this big triangle, is can point to the other big triangle, triangle big right triangle, triangle PQC. So why those two triangles can go into each other? First of all, we just try to find out that PK equals to PQ, they are both the radii of the circle, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, if we focus on the common extent point, point C, from the common extent point, point C, we have two tangents to the circle, tangent CK and tangent CQ. Therefore, according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. So CK equals to CQ. And finally, PC is the common side that belongs to both triangles, so PC equals to itself. So, in conclusion, we found out that those two triangles can went to each other according to side, side, side rule. And from the fact that the two big triangles can point to each other, we will derive that those two angles are equal to each other, and must be equal to each other, according to the rule that corresponding angles in can point triangles are equal to each other. Those two big triangles can point to each other, therefore the two Corresponding angles must be also equal to each other. So if one angle is equal to theta, then the other angle, angle must be also equal to theta because of the fact because of the fact that they are equal to each other. Okay. Then we join points K and Q together by a straight line. In this way, we create a triangle KQC. So we can conclude for what we did here that PC is also the angle by set of C. Why? Because PC, the angle by self to PC by sex angle, angle C into two halves. Each half equals to theta. So actually, we found that angle C, so PC is angle by self to of C in triangle KQC. So in conclusion, we found out that angle C is two angle by self to PC 
this angle by step to of angle C in triangle KQC, and we already found out that CO is also the angle by step to of angle C in triangle OMC. So angle C is two angle by sectors, OC and PC. And then we add a claim. Our claim is the angle by sector CO passes for point P. Again, angle by sector CO passes for point P. On, in other words, points C, O, and P, they are all located on the same straight line. This is our claim. Repeat again, our claim is that the angle by sector OC passes for point P. Report the claim in a negative way. That is to say, we assumed that CO doesn't pass for point P. Okay? According to a negative way of the proof, we assumed that CO doesn't pass for point P. Therefore, we will have here, according to our assumption, two angles. We will have angle DCO that is equal to theta. Here, angle DCO is equal to theta. And it is very easy to see that CD is part of BC. Here, CD is part of BC. Okay? That is to say, BC and CD are located on the same straight line. Okay, so we have here yeah, BC and DC are located on the same straight line. And we know that angle DCO is equal to theta. Here yeah, we found out that angle DCO equals to theta. And we have Second angle here, angle, the second angle that we have here is angle BCP. This angle BCP. Okay? And we know that BC and DC are located on the same side line. Again, DC is on the same straight line as BC. So the first leg, the first leg, this first leg of those two angles, they are both located on the same straight line. Here, this leg and this leg, they are lo all located on the same straight line because B, uh, CD is part of BC. Okay? What about the second leg of the two angles? Here, the second leg of this angle, the second leg of this angle is CO. This is the second leg. And the second leg of this angle is CP. Okay? But according to our assumption, CO, CO doesn't pass us doesn't pass us for point P. If CO doesn't pass us for point P, it means that CO and CP are not located on the same straight line. Very simple. Again, if CO doesn't pass us for point P, it means that CO and CP are not located on the same straight line. And if you have two angles that one of their leg are located on the same straight line here BC and uh, DC and BC they all they are both located on the same straight line and the second leg of the two angles is not located on the same straight line it means that they are not equal to each other because when one angle is located when one leg is located on the same straight line, then the other leg must be also located on the same straight line, both angles, 
in order that the two angles will be equal to each other. And according to our assumption, here uh, all, uh, all C is not located on the same slot line as PC. So the second leg of the two angles are not located on the same slot line. Therefore, we can conclude from it that they are not equal to each other. That is to say, is if this angle is theta, this angle is alpha. Okay, so we actually found out that the angle bisector C, uh, uh, angle C is two angle bisectors, CO and CP, and they bisect angle C into two different halves. So, okay. According to our assumption, CD and CO are not located on the same straight line, as I already mentioned. So angle C is two angle bisectors, that are CO and CP, that bisects it into two different halves. Okay? While the angle bisector CO bisects angle C, into two halves that are, that are theta and theta, angle bisector CP bisects the same angle, angle C, into two different halves that are, that are alpha and alpha. It, it is impossible. Why? Because if angle C is equal to 30 degrees, for example, then any angle bisector of angle C must bisect angle C into two halves, that each half equals to 15 degrees, and 15 degrees only, and not to any other halves. So due to our uh, due to the contradiction, we we'll conclude that the, our assumption is incorrect, and therefore CO passes for point P. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, so. Our assumption that CO doesn't pass us from point P uh, will uh, uh, give us a contradiction, and therefore we must assume, we must conclude that CO passes from point P. Okay? Then we actually uh, focused on the right small green triangle triangle ODC. In the right small triangle triangle ODC, this angle equals to theta, this angle equals to 90 degrees. Therefore, the third angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Why? Because 90 degrees minus theta plus theta is 90 degrees. And 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. That is the sum of any time, the sum of the angles in any triangle. So this angle equals to 19 degrees minus theta. Exactly for the same reason, in triangle, the, the right triangle PQC, this angle equals to theta, this angle equals to 19 degrees, therefore this angle must be equal to 19 degrees minus theta. Then we put the, the two right triangles, triangle PQC, similar to triangle ODC. Why those two triangles are similar to each other? First of all, we just right now found out that those two angles, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta, therefore they are equal to each other. In addition, those two angles, they are both equal to 90 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. And finally, and this angle, angle theta, is a common angle that belongs to both triangles, so angle theta equals to itself. So we actually proved that those two triangles can go into each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And from the fact that those, those two triangles are similar to each other, we will derive that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will derive that here, PQ in the right big triangle over OD in the small right triangle 
is equal to QC, the big right angle, over DC. I'll repeat again. PQ over OD is equal to QC over DC. PQ equals to R. OD equals to 1, it is the radius of the small circle. QC, what is the value of QC? QC equals to 3 plus 1 plus 3, that is 7, plus QF. So here, again, QC equals to 7 plus QF. So we solve this at QC by 7 plus QF. What is the value of DC? DC equals to X, that is equal to 3. So we substitute DC by 3. So in conclusion, we found out that R equals to 7 plus QF over 3. We multiply this equation by 3, and we found out that 3R equals to 7 plus QF. Then we subtracted 7 from this equation, equation number 1, and we found out that QF equals to 3R minus 7. Here, QF equals to 3R minus 7. Then, because of the fact that the radius, uh, the, le the side length of this square is equal to 3 units, we examined three cases for the value of the radius. Either the radius of this circle will be less than three units, the radius of this circle will be equal exactly to three units, and the radius of this big circle will be greater than three units. So according to the first case that the radius of this circle is less than three units, we have this drawing. You can see here that the radius is less than 3 units, therefore the side length of the square is longer than the radius, that is less than 3 units, because the side length is 3 and the radius is less than 3, so the side length is longer than the radius. Okay, so here uh, this angle equals to 90 degrees, according to rule number one, we have the radius that is going to the point of tendency, therefore this angle equals to 90 degrees. So, here inside quadrilateral PHQF, this quadrilateral, we have one, two, three angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So, inside quadrilateral PH QF, we have four right angles. Therefore, quadrilateral PHQF is a rectangle. Quadrilateral PHQF is a rectangle, and we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, PH equals to QF. PH equals to QF, but we know that PH equals to R, therefore QF must be also equal to R. So, here, QF from one side it is equal to R, but from the other side we have already found out that QF also equals to 3R minus 7. Therefore, R that is equal to QF equals to 3R minus 7, that is also QF. So we have this equation, we subtracted R from this equation and found out that 2R minus 7 equals to Zero, we added 7 to this equation and found out that the 2R equals to 7. We divided this equation by 2 and we found out that R equals to 3.5 units. But according to our assumption, R is less than 3 units. So R cannot be simultaneously less than 3 units and also equals to 3.5 units. Therefore, it is a contradiction. Therefore, the possibility that R is less than 3 units is a correct possibility. So we cancel this possibility. Then we have the second case. In the second case, we have the case that R equals to three units exactly. So we have this drawing. This drawing, the radius, the side length of the square is three units also. So here we have quadrilateral PHQC that has one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. The fourth quadrilateral PHQF is a rectangle. And the opposite sides of rectangle are equal to each other. 
that is to say pH equals to QF, but pH equals to R. Therefore, QF must be also equal to R. But R equals to 3, so here, 3 equals to pH equals to QF. Okay? Here, pH equals to QF on one side, but we know that pH equals to 3, so you can write here that 3 equals to pH equals to QF, and for this equation we derive that QF equals to 3. So for one, for one side QF equals to 3, from the other side QF equals also to 3R107. Therefore 3 equals to 3R107, we added 7 to this equation and found out that 3R equals to 7 plus 3, that is 10. So we divided this equation by 3 and found out that R, the radius of this fixed circle, equals to 3 and the third. But according to our assumption, the radius of this circle is equal to 3. So the radius of the circle cannot be simultaneously equals to 3 and 3 and, and the third. So it is a contradiction. Due to the contradiction, we cancel the solution. This is a possibility. That is to say, the radius of this circle cannot equal to 3 units. So we left only the first case that R is greater than 3 units. So if R is greater than 3 units, then we will have this uh, boring and uh, in this drawing, we have a radius that is we have a radius that is uh, uh, longer than three units. Here, you can see that the radius is longer than three units. Therefore. The side length of the square that is 3 units is shorter than the radius, as you can see here. It's shorter than PK, that is the radius. Okay, so we have here inside the quadrilateral uh, from point H, from point H, we draw perpendicular on the radius PQ. Again, from point H, we draw perpendicular on the radius PQ. So here, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees, according to our construction. So inside, for the underall THQF, we have 1, 2, 3 right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So inside quadrilateral HTQF we have four right angles. Therefore quadrilateral THP and THQF is a rectangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say TQ is equal to HF. TQ is equal to HF. But HF is the side length of the square that is three units. So here HF equals to 3, and for this equation TQ equals to HF equals to 3, we will derive that TP is also equals to 3 units. Here TP is actually TQ, here TQ is also equals to 3 units. Okay? Likewise, according to the sum rule that the opposite sides of the rectangle are equal to each other, we will get that. TH is equal to QF. TH is equal to QF. But according to what we have already found out, we have already found out that QF equals to 3R minus 7. And from this equation, TH equals to QF equals to 3R minus 7, we will derive that TH is also equal to 3R minus 7. Here, TH equals to 3R minus 7. So, what is the value of PT? PT equals to PQ minus. PQ. Again, PT equals to P, T, T, P, PT equals to PQ minus TQ. Here, 
and PT equals to PQ minus TQ. So PT equals to T, uh, PQ that is R minus TQ that is 3. So in conclusion we found out that PT equals to R minus 3. We have only found out that T uh, H equals to 3 R minus 7. We join points P and H together by a straight line. Point P is the center of the circle. Point H is the point on the circle itself. Therefore PH is the radius of the circle that is equal to R. Then I copied the right green triangle triangle PTH in a new page and we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the right big triangle, triangle PTH. So this is the right triangle, triangle PTH that I copied from the original drawing. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the apotheosis is equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The apotheosis is PH, therefore the square of the apotheosis is PH square. It must be equal to the sum of the squares of, of the perpendiculars, that is to say it must be equal to PT square plus TH square. PH is R, therefore PH square is R square. PT is R minus 3, therefore uh, here PT is R minus 3. Therefore, PT square is R minus 3 square plus TH square. TH is 3R minus 7, therefore TH square is 3R minus 7 square. So, in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, R square equals to R minus 3 square plus 3R minus 7 square. We opened the brackets on both sides of the equation and we found out that R square equals to R minus 3 square. R minus 3 square equals to R square plus 3 square, that is 9, minus 2R times 3 is minus 6R plus 3R minus R square equals to 3R squared, that is 9R squared, plus 7 squared, that is 49, minus 2 times 3 times R is minus, uh, 2 times 3 is minus 6, and minus 6 times 7 is minus 42, so in total the expression will be equal to minus 42R. So we have here R squared on both sides of the equation, so R squared will get cancelled, and we left only with 0, that is equals to 9 plus 49 is 58, plus 9R squared, and minus 6R, minus 48, 2R is minus 48R. So we have here a quadratic equation, and then uh, the quadratic equation that states that 9R squared, minus 48R, plus 58 is equal to 0. And the general formula for a quadratic equation is AX squared plus BX plus C equals to 0. And uh, here A, B, C are on the coefficient of the quadratic equation, and X is the variable that we are looking for. And we find out the value of X according to the follow, following formula, that X equals to minus B plus minus square root of B square minus 4 times A, C over 2A. In our specific quadratic equation, A equals to 9, B equals to minus 48, and C equals to 58. And the variable that we are looking for in our quadratic, specific quadratic equation is R, so x equals to R. Therefore, we put the data inside the equation and found out that x equals to R, so R equals to minus b, b equals to minus 48, so minus b is minus, minus 48, that is 48, plus minus square root of b squared. Minus b is minus 48, so b squared is minus 48 squared, that is 20. 2304. Minus 4 times A is 9, so minus 4 times 9 is minus, 30, minus 36, and uh, minus 36 times C that is 58, so minus 36 times 58 is 2088. Divided by 2A. A is 9, so 2A is 19. So in conclusion, we found out that R equals to 48 plus minus 2304. 2088 is 216 or divided by 18. So we found out that R equals to plus minus. The square root of 216 is 14.6969 divided by 18. So here we have two solutions that are possible for R. The first solution for R is that R equals to 48 minus 14.6969 that is equal to 33.3031 over 18 and 33.3031 over 18 is equal to 1.85.
So we found out that the radius of the, this big circle is equal to 1.85 we found into the first solution. But because of the fact that we have only found out that the radius of the big circle cannot be less than 3 units, and 1.85 is less than 3 units, we cancel the solution and we left only with the second solution that the radius of this big circle is equal to 48 plus 14.6969 over 18. 48 plus 14.6969 is 64.6969 over 18. 62.6969 over 18 is 3.48 free units. So in conclusion, found out that the radius of this circle, the radius of the big circle, capital R, is equal to 3.483 units. Okay, thank you very much.